It's not like I can teach it to you. Once you catch the vision, you got it. Catch the Vision Podcast. Leadership tips, powerful lessons, and inspiration. That's not how this worked, and it's never worked this way. If you didn't get the concept, how in the world are you going to understand what I'm saying? Here's your hosts, John Trimble and Mike Cornwell. All right. We're, we're live. I mean, technically we've been live, but little technical difficulties with the new <laughs> setup and all that. Hey, I'm Mike. This is John. Welcome to Catch the Vision. And today I've got kind of a special episode because what I'm going to say is I caught John's vision. Uh-oh, I'm in trouble. And so I put, <laughs> I, I posted on this and I, I told a couple people that John was right. <laughs> Uh-oh, and I don't even know yet. That's <laughs> and, the... everybody, and everybody said, don't say that to John. But I'm saying it <laughs> live because John was right. So what I found was um, I caught, I would say, your vision. And what that means is I came across a random video that was seven hours on what the early church is. You know, what is the, the New Testament's understanding of church and assembly activities that then when, um, you know, after, after Christ and then they're taking it on and then, you know, Paul does his writings and then they start to meet. And then what happens over time from that moment on? And it was so red-pilling, so enlightening that I literally have not talked about talk about anything else for four days. Wow. If I can avoid it. Wow. And so my conclusions. Number one, most of Christianity is Judaism. As in like, what it actually is, is people are out there, they don't realize it, that they've been converted into Judaism. That's most Christians. Nearly all churches are actually temples. You know what I mean? Yes. I know you know exactly what I'm talking about. I'm following you. So you said the Baptist way. That's the thing you were saying. Well, now I know what that is. That's Judaism. Which is very ironic because Judaism really came back around because of Christianity. Funnily enough. But that's a whole other topic. Don't want to get into any of that because I would stray way too far out. But they basically... And it started, supposedly, around 280 to 300 AD with Constantine and the Roman Empire basically co-opting Christianity and then was like, hey, uh, yeah, you have this amazing thing. You're doing all this. Uh, but I'm going to build temples and I'm going to have things called sacraments, which are sacrifices that are then done in altars where priests are going to go and do it. Dude, that's Judaism. And that's the, that's where we need that paradigm shift so that it's no longer just a priest because yes. he has made us kings and priests. That's correct. And we're the ones that need to actualize and do the things that God gave his priests to do. We are the priests of the Lord. Yeah, that's right. And so radically different, one of the, the kind of quotes, there's, there's way too much to actually go into it. It was seven hours of just, yeah. you're getting pounded with, the scientific information, the historical information, the cross-referencing of these words, what the words mean, like all the wisdom or not wisdom, uh, worship words. Right. And so his that guy's overall argument was that uh, Christianity has been co-opted by worship and doing worship. So when you go to church, you worship at church, but that's not what they did at all. In fact, there's zero evidence in the Bible that anyone ever in the New Testament worshiped at a church what they did was they met in their homes which i know you know this and they did what we normally do on mondays which is bible study we share food together as a as a as a group oh horrible and without a temple or a steeple jesus it, it, it's so it's so it's, it's so crazy um because for like probably about a year and a half now since we've been doing it, i'm like there's something so right about what we're doing here but i don't know what that is and all of a sudden i realized Oh, this is how you actually build community. So people out there right now who may be watching this, who are not doing the things that I and my group are doing, you're actually missing out on the wholeness of life itself. That's right. And literally spending at least one day a week where you're with the same group of people, breaking bread and improving one another. Can you imagine, just to interject here, yeah. that God would come to the world through Christ and then give us another set of rules and another way to do te temple? No. 
a thousand times no. He didn't now, come here to clearly, give us. A, it clearly didn't work then. Yeah, and he's going to give us another one, a different one, and that's what we're. That's what people have. You say co-opted by Judaism, mm -hmm, but mm -hmm. technically, we accepted a whole other set is. of rules, and we can't live. Yes. and we can't live free. No, we cannot. And it was for freedom that Christ sent us free. That's the scripture. Yeah. It was for freedom. So we we want, we are set free to be priests unto our God, which He promised in the Old Testament. And we can now be, well, we, we're dealing with leadership, but technically leadership belongs to the people. Yes. And so there are those with giftings and callings in certain offices. We're okay with that. Yep. But that doesn't mean that they lord it over the flock. No. Or that they're the big he they're the big deal pastor and you do it, no. we say, an hour, one hour on Sunday. Uh, excuse me, that's not enough. Yeah. And that's not worship. That's just meeting. <laughs> It's just a yeah, meeting. Well, well, see, that's the thing. Um, it's, you know, an assembly, a right. meeting. That's and and the the best way this guy explained it was like, imagine you're you're doing this thing in your house. And so would you be doing those kinds of things in your house? <laughs> no. No, of course you wouldn't. Like one dude is gonna be wearing some weird, like expensive robe. I mean, maybe to like show it off, we're all gonna laugh for like 20 seconds, but you would not, you wouldn't do that in somebody's house and then do it time after time. Hey, yeah, go get that funny robe on and then come over here and then shake the stuff. And then we're getting, we're gonna get, and then we're gonna get into a trance over here. And once, That's a weird house party. And one person does the, the bread and the wine, the Eucharist, or whatever, yes. and, they want to call, and that word Eucharist is really called by the Catholic Church, so it would make it some kind of holy sacrament. Yes. And then yes. if we go... They call it the holy sacrament. And if we're doing communion, you got to sit still and listen. Go through it and do it in remembrance of Jesus. But Jesus didn't say in remembrance. That is not the word. Don't forget me. Don't forget me. Make sure you do wine and communion so you won't forget me. Seriously? Christians are going to forget Jesus? Well, what, what, did he, what, did, what did he say? He said, commune with me. It's supposed to be an encounter oh, with God. I see. Not an object lesson or a uh, quote-unquote religious exercise. Well, so... Uh-oh, he, religious he, exercise. Uh-oh, we just... He, attacked. he brought up this, and I have no experience in this, but I do... I'm just going to leave it at that. I'm not going to try to place it where I don't know it exists, but I trust this this person's, uh, like, 40 years of research on this topic. Uh, he was talking about how the, the whole Eucharist and the Holy Sacraments or whatever, it's... By consumption of the cup, you are sacrificing that you are now the sacrifice. The, isn't that the most twisted thing you've ever heard? Oh, it's... Dude, J to... Jesus is the sacrifice, yeah. the last sacrifice. So why are people having to be sacrificed every single Saturday or every single Sunday? That's crazy. <laughs> that's like, that's totally ludicrous. And if you listen to me, when I was doing the communion time that they asked me to help out with that, I was trying to get the people to see oh, yeah. that this is a time for an encounter with God, not a time to do something to make him happy. We're not serving. Yeah, it's, a, it's not a rule that we're keeping in order to make him happy. That is literally what that guy was talking about. Again, back to his core message was about worship. And like even saying it, it's like interesting to think that like you're not supposed to go to church to worship. And some of people are like, how dare you say that? That doesn't make any sense. <laughs> it's like, okay, but you, you'd have to like, again, it's like with the seven hours, you have to understand how this came to be. And then it becomes very clear. That's what I they, studied in they school. Did, they did not do this. Yeah. And they did not do this for a reason and explicitly. So... Um, I hear people make arguments like, oh, this is what the early church did. No, that's not what the early church did. That's what the church did after it was co-opted. And you can see it in the writings, like post, post New Testament, you know, for the, the next couple hundred years, you could see the evolution of it. It was rock solid for about 250 years. And then all of a sudden you had these nutty people like you see today that are out there who write the controversial things and all that and they started they started creating all these stupid words and like packagitizing it and i really think that they basically turned it the the romans took what when i think about what actually ended up happening and, and what is out there now i've come to the conclusion that this is the inevitable outcome 
of people when they are trying to touch spiritual, that they will start to create altars, that they will create temples, that they will create rules, that they will put some people above other people. That's just the natural evolution of things. And you could see it happen to the one religion that was not about that. In fact, so much so that the, the general populace who's not Christian whatsoever, they have that belief about it. Yeah. Which is crazy. Yeah. That is crazy. Yeah. And when you stray into this Judaism. <clears throat> yes. Chris, Christian Judaism. Yes, Christian so, Judaism. Then you miss what Jesus came to set us free. Yeah. And everything that he said about when, when he sat in the temple after 400 years, he said, <laughs> Spirit of the Lord is on me. He, to set free the captives, captive in any, I don't care if you're captive of the rules, if you're yeah. uh, a captive to religion or a captive to religious exercises, if you're a captive, you need captive. to be set free. And he came and said, you're free, you're, you're, you're mine and you're free. And we have to get, we can't get away from being his <clears throat> ever, but so many people I'm his, and then they fall right back into that Christian Judaism, yes. and they begin. And this is why I, when I first came to you, I said, "What I see about leadership is there's a lack of truth being told, yes. because we're in this aura or or philosophy of the air that says, Pastor, he's the greatest, and listen to him an hour, and then go, and that's worship, or." We, we'll do some songs. It's all part of that thing. And I'm saying, whoa, whoa, time out. That's not leadership. That's not what God, the Bible is teaching. And so we get into this. We get into this a little bit. And hopefully it will interest some people that we're talking about we're free. And it's very, very, very much an enemy of religion. It is. Because now I'm free. I don't have to do the religion. Religion does. No, you don't. The religion can't handle it. And that's why we have that buffeting and that prince of the power of the air even oh, affects the church. I heard You heard me say it. Even the prince of the power of the air affects the church. And so, we, we don't like that, but it's true. I, one of the reasons why I want to do like this podcast and do it kind of this way, because like how I opened it, this is what it is like to catch a vision. Yeah, that's what that's Where what you literally, you get hit with something, a realization, it kind of, it comes in and all of a sudden you're like, whoa, like literally cannot go backwards. So <laughs> yeah. like, yeah. even when this topic dies down and I'm not that interested in it, I'm not going back because now I understand. You can't go back. I, I, I understand very crystal clear yeah. that it's, um, it's, like it's, it, there's all these different things and it's a all revelation. of that has been put in play. It is a revelation. And you know, the, the principle of revelation is once you get it, you can't go back. No, you cannot go If back. I show you the true meaning of of anything, garbage, a, a curtain, a waste, uh, the tree. Once you see it, you can't say, oh, no, that isn't. No, it isn't. You st <laughs> Once you get it, you can't go back. But you can. This is the problem with Israel. They heard it, and they ignored it, and they lost it. Oh, man. Uh, that's, that's And they've been repeatedly. That's the pattern all through Old they've Testament. They've been repeatedly told. There's it's way beyond Old Testament. At this point, they're still. Well, doing sure, this. yeah, they're but I'm talking it, about. Yeah. You can see. Well, I well, I love the fact of looking at the Old Testament because you see that story, and you just look today, and you're like, they're still doing the same thing today. <laughs> like today, they're still doing it. But something I want to hone in on, like one of the things that really drew me out, and something you mentioned was about the holification of everything that is not holy. Yeah, it is crazy. For example. Like, and I know there's like, it, what's kind of crazy to think about is how many modern churches are out there. And I mean, the modern ones, they're like, we're trying to get back to Jesus. Like, okay, cool. Like everything about that is cool. And then you get in there and then it's like, yeah, here's our sanctuary. Like, okay, time out. This is just a building. Yeah, it's just a building, but you just call it a sanctuary. Like you don't understand. <laughs> you called it a holy room now and, and people will act differently when they go in there. And, and it's like, well, that's good, isn't it? No. No, it's not good. No, it's a, it isn't good. It's an edifice complex. That's what it is. An edifice. Yes. It's a building. It's a complex in this building, in the, in the building of the Lord. I've heard a pastor the other day on TV say, when you're in the house of God. House of God. Wait a minute. Time out. The Bible calls us the house. Yes. Uh, We're the house. That was a big thing that was brought up was the amount that, it, you know, the house <laughs> of worship. Oh yeah. The the you know in any and all We're worshiping God now. We're worshiping him now. This is worship unto him. As far as I'm concerned, yes. this is all unto him. While we're living, we're worshiping him. We are in the 
in Christ, worshiping him. That is part of the deal, the lifestyle. The, 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 it's part of the deal. But when we say it's only, it's only at this segment, it's only at this point, we encapulize it so that we can get away from, because we feel bad if we're not. Yes. We get that, that understanding that, well, oh, in the house of the Lord, that's when we do it. So we feel bad if we're. We basically want to. you like, can't do it outside the house of worship. We basically want to go back in chains. Go back and get captive. To what you're saying right there. Um, the what I also realized was the efforts that these churches are doing are actually counterproductive, and they think that oh, it is productive, absolutely. and and it's insidious. And so here's the perfect one about so the nature of worship, right? When and and like and and what we would call the general nature of worship. Now, when you look at the biblical nature of worship. It is, there's literally eight words and it has very specific meanings. And the majority of it all is bowing down, you know, the uh, prostrate. Uh, the second one is like sacrifice, which they call serve. Uh-huh. It's literally sacrifice. So you are sacrifice something. And then uh, it goes on from there. I'm not going to go in there. It doesn't, it doesn't, it really doesn't matter. But um, the, our general concept of worship, which is not in the Bible at all, <laughs> Um, it's like, it's an individual thing that I'm going to align my efforts and I'm going to kind of look up to God and I'm doing that. When you are doing that, you are actually isolating yourself from everybody else. So when you go to these meetings or you go to these assemblies, you are in, in, in the worship music, right? So it's like the lyrics and the nature of the worship music. It creates a individualized experience that you are having and they encourage this and they do things like, for example, turn the turn the lights down so that you can worship in private. So you feel comfortable. It's the first time in your life you can worship. Like it all <laughs> sounds reasonable and it all like kind of makes sense until you understand what it is doing. Well, don't it forget is, the smoke. You got to put the fake smoke on it. Well, of course. So the, <laughs> what it's doing, though, is it's actually creating these individual walls between you and everybody else. So and people leave hollow. And people do that because they don't want to answer for the what they're doing outside of that religious exercise. So what's happening is oh, they're saying, we're doing it here and I'm safe. And if I'm safe here and do it here, then I don't have to worry about out there. Mm. And what happens is... Well, they say that all the time there about like, oh, you know, don't do the church once a week thing. But it's like, you're not like, they don't understand that what they are doing is creating that. They're creating all of these things that are, that these ills that are coming in. So it's like, well, why do people leave? Because you have no community. How do you create community? By sharing food and having real life together. And we live in this world today and now where people will go week in and week out and never break bread with anyone. And you read this, the Acts, I just was reading Acts. I, I read through the whole thing, the book of Acts. But when you look at the first uh, events that were happening and 3,000 people got saved and they all got together and had all things common and would would uh, sell some land in order to give it to the group so that the, the apostles could be out teaching and doing whatever. Mm. The, these are these are life, what do I want to say? They're a part of life. The nature of it is a living God inside them, not a nature is temple. The, the nature is not another, another, um, another, another, uh, uh, place of worship. Yes. That's another one they call them, the place of worship. Place well, of worship. The place of worship is everywhere you go. It's supposed to be everywhere you go. It's all the time. Well, John, it's a, it's I mean, a, John, they're not, I, I truly feel that they are not trying to be bad. They're actually trying to do the right thing, but they're going in the completely wrong direction. That's what I'm saying. They're lost. Yep. They are and actually they're lost. And they're part of the problem. They are absolutely part of the problem. Because actually, they're perpetuating the same thing over And that's why I talked to you way back. You and I talked about this. The void here is the truth. Well, the part I take, I, pay, I take maybe mild offense to it. It isn't here. It's here. Well, it's uh, it's way everywhere. It's, it's in California. It's on Earth. It's it, yes. Yeah, it's on Earth. Like on I'm Earth. always going like, oh, you're talking about like our little valleys over here. No, it's yeah. it is across the entire Southeast. Yes. I'm sure it is in the Northeast. Yes, and it's all the way. It's everywhere. I, I've been everywhere. I it's went, everywhere. I went it's to, in the Middle East. I was in the Middle East. The same thing. Of course it is, because it's regular people stuff. This is what people do, and it's a it 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 causes splits splits between people. But I'll tell you right now, my experience on our Mondays doing our Bible study, 
there are there could have been plenty of times that we could have split, but there's like there's only, we're only building. So every single week we're sh we're we're sharing we're going even deeper and we're not even talking about like the bible discussion part yeah. or any of that it's just the regular experience yeah. where we're and we're not doing it one on one that is different where you spend like one on one and you, you do a right. dinner with somebody right. you're now doing it with a group of people so you talk to these people and that people and they know each other and then say so you got it all and then what we then do is after like the meal then we go and we go into the sanctuary mm -hmm. mostly just cuz it's freaking quiet <laughs> <laughs> has nothing to do with the fact that it's the holy place yeah, yeah, yeah. cuz it's not um, and then we have a discussion where there's very different people who are at that. And I've always liked that because there's like, wow, that's a really interesting perspective. I never saw it from that way. It's like, okay, that's a totally different way to view and that. It, and it's a place, uh, two things. It's a place where you recognize in that person when they share or do something, you go, I recognize his gifting. Yes. He is, there's a gifting that he has that... She doesn't have, but I like that. He's got a gift. Of yes. I mean, give me your arm for a second. I want to okay. say something. The, uh, that's what the Bible says, the church, which is his body. And in the church, there are no schisms. That means from here to here, if you can see it like that, it's emptiness. There's nothing there. Just imagine that the wrist is connected to the arm, but between that is the emptiness. That's yeah. called a schism. Mm. There can be no schisms in the body or hand will die. Yeah. Or a schism in your leg and a hand will die. Or, but I think what we got here is a schism between the shoulders and the and the head. And there's a there's a neck, but there's no neck. And the head. So I, I, he gives us the example of a body that shares, like you were talking about, by and, and we receive from the Lord by that which every joint supplies. The, and that's amazing it is. concept in Ephesians. We're not. He didn't say. The church, which is his place of worship. No, no, no. He said the church, which is his body. We are members of one another, part one another. And so he says, the eye can't say to the ear, I, I don't need you. And the leg can't say to the hand, I don't need you. Suddenly we, um, we decom or co compartmentalize these things when it's just a living body. Living and eating and sharing and worshiping and whatever. Whatever. And so, uh, and studying or whatever it is. We are a living organism, not a living organization. And that's a big point that people don't catch. And so what happens is Christians get saved and they start thinking right. Instead of uh, growing in the Lord like this, they start, they make a, a change. This is an amazing thing. They go like this, they go so far up, and then they shift. Mm -hmm. And they stay where they're at in the holy place and they, they swallow that paradigm and what happens is they're not still growing up. And you can see me do this. It's one thing to grow up, but if you grow this far and then you start to stay in there and you go to different places of worship and in that paradigm, you no longer grow with one you know another. Why? You, with know why? One another. you know why you don't grow? You don't grow because it's a horizontal activity. It's horizontal. So that was like another major pull away. One of that the which every joint supplies. It's, it's the body. The body... The hand needs yes. the brain. So, I mean, the, the, I'll say from that ex from that experience of, of working with those people, um, first, like you said, I definitely identified those people are very different. And if I'm not careful, and I should be more careful, um, I will not remind myself that I don't actually understand them. And if I don't remind myself of that, I may disqualify their thing. Or you'll miss or you'll miss it because of your mentality. Yes, that's right. And so for example, one of one of the persons in this group, um, I'm like a I'm an audio person who's logic oriented, uh, but not I'm not dominated by logic. If somebody yeah. kinds of does some hand wavy mystical stuff, I'm like, okay, I can kinda I can kind of see what's going on there. Whereas other people they're like Explain the argument to me like exactly right. And I mean, I have more like that than not like that, where I'm trying to be precise and try to clean up somebody's language or something. Um, and I think that's fine, but I can fall into the trap of thinking, I'm like listening to them, like, this is nonsense what they're saying, which is can be a good thing, but these are people who are close to me who deserve more respect than just blowing away with what they're saying is nonsense. What they're saying may be nonsense. But that's not their thing is to be the person who's saying the thing in such the way. That may be my gift. Their gift may be, for example, interpretation, which that is, that's straight out of what Paul said. 
Some people are going to be prophets. Some people are going to be and their interpretation. Or discernment of spirits. Or yes. they have a gift of healing, maybe. Or they have, yes. who knows what their gifts. And, and this person who feels like they couldn't be more opposite to me, they are way more in that woo category. And so their spirit and like in, intuition, sometimes they say these intuitions. I'm like, this is ridiculous. But then sometimes I kind of stop and go like, well, maybe there's more here than I'm giving it credit. Because I know this person has spent a lot of time considering these things and it's not like they're just willy-nilly throwing these yeah. out. Yeah. So that that is a growth perspective for me and that just came from Absolutely. having conversations. And I'm and I will say I'm not having conversations with random strangers. That's not what's no, happening right, here. Right. These are people who I'm having them day in and day out that I know them so well that I know like I know what their problems are. Yeah. That's like what a real community looks like. Guess what? No one has that because you don't do the things you were told to do. And instead you're doing other stuff. Like, oh, I've got to go to church. What do you got to go to church for? <laughs> you know, if, if this revelation and what we're sharing was permeating the air and the whole, we're only in this region, but it's all yeah, over the world. Yep, yep. It permeates, and, and, and let's say there's 12 pastors or 20, I don't know how many are, get this real revelation, they'll quit their church. I, uh, <laughs> they'll find they'll find quote unquote quit their church because they'll find this ain't the right paradigm. This is not what and this and you know if they're honest if they're honest, yes. and I've been there I've been there with several yeah. different churches. If they're honest, they'll look at it and go, you know, this is not cutting the mustard. This is not doing the deal. Uh, this is yes. not a place where gifts are happening because yes. it's set into one little area and that's all we can do. So uh, you know, um, man, we're not, I'm going to tell you something. Yeah. If anybody's catching this vision and understanding this vision, it'll transform your way you walk. It will absolutely. I'm telling you, that's why I, ha I have not. I've had to talk about some other things, but I'm not interested in those because yeah. this topic was like every time I put a new new cassette into the YouTube player. Yeah. Um, I'd start listening to it. I'm like, I understand the gist of his argument, but then it was like. Whoa, whoa, <laughs> pause. I can't listen to this anymore. I've got to pause because I've got to freaking breathe. I got to think about it. I mean, I mean, his, his seven part series, one was like kind of his overall thing about the nature of worship. One was about how um, they do, you should not preach in a church. You could tell me who this is later. Yeah, I, I can do that. And um, <laughs> if I remember, I'll, I'll throw it in the, the show notes. I know no one ever remembers that, but I'll try to remember that. Um, the... Uh, he, uh, so yeah, not to preach in a church. And the, the, the general gist on that is preaching is evangelizing, which means you're converting somebody who's an unbeliever into a believer. That's a certain kind of audience. You have to talk a certain kind of way to them. When you are around other people who already believe something, you cannot talk like that. You don't talk about those things. It's just weird. It's just, it's, just, it's really kind of crazy. And you know, in, in, in every instance in the New Testament where there are the gifts of the Spirit, or to talking about things of the Spirit and stuff, you'll see verses that say, and those who are unlearned and those that aren't saved and those that aren't believers will say to you, wow, that's God, that's of God, that's of God. Because they will recognize if they're in your group. You see, you can't be exclusive with your group either. This is the whole thing about churches. They're exclusive kind of thing. They are if, an exclusive If you get thing. exclusive with your group, then you don't have people that need to hear God and know God see it in you guys and say, wow, that's God. That's good. Instead, we let them go to church and they'll get it there. No, 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 oh, no. Lord, a yeah. thousand times no. Because only so much can happen in that little hour or hour and a half or whatever you have. And suddenly you are falling into a paradigm that causes, it actually becomes a part of that same so, problem. What I don't want to do, I'll let somebody else, but for now, in, in this moment in time, I'm not ready to go, let's cut all this Judaism down with the sword. Because one thing I will say that I do believe that by bringing, maybe, that my hope is that by bringing some of the unbelievers to these churches, they may it may start to slide them over, but then they got to be pulled out. Yeah, they got to be pulled out. Maybe they're there for yeah. like a year or something, but then they they got to be pulled out they, because if they keep because right. what I've noticed is those environments, 
they're trying, and I've heard this argument, but now I really understand it. They're trying to cater to two different audiences that are so different that yeah. you cannot talk to them the same way. You are wasting one of their times and you're failing to do, be effective at one or the other at any moment in time. So when they're doing altar calls and stuff like that, like this is the time to like lay it down and, uh, and, and put it out. That is for the unbeliever. That's right. I'm going to blow your mind with this, but the scripture, because when you just said that, it just came to me. It says, without a, a vision, the people won't pull themselves out. When you think about that, okay, yeah. and you get that revelation and that vision, you go, hey, I can't do this anymore. This is not what we're supposed to be doing. This is what we're supposed to be People, if yes. they don't have that vision, they won't pull themselves out. Yes. And so so I'm, I'm of the nature and of, of the persuasion. I got to tell them that there's a place to go. Besides your little segmented uh, place of worship, hospital, <laughs> and you can pull yourself out of there. I mean, it may take a little time because you're new, you're a baby, and God takes care of the babes in Christ. But eventually, you got to go. Hey, wait a minute! I got, I got to dwell. I got to restrain myself from this stuff to get into the freedom. Oh. So, so I've been bringing this up because I, I I love to to I'll, I'll poke you outside of here. I'm like, yeah, John keeps talking about this Baptist thing, and everybody's like, well, what's that? And I've tried to explain it about like, oh, well, you know, you do this and that and that. But, you know, certainly not in the fullness of understanding it. And um, <laughs> the one of the things is to, to exactly what you're saying, they go, they're like, I'm interested in knowing more, but what are we supposed to do? Right. And that's and that's like, that's the question. It's not even that hard. And it's in the book. It's just like right there. And admittedly, someone does have to have a vision. Someone does kind of, I mean, there there is that thing. The leadership thing is never going to go away. But um, the leadership the, problem is never going to go away. No, no. And and the and the activity of having the revelation and then bringing people along. And maybe, back to your point, maybe some of the methodology approach was needed at some point. I don't know. I kind of, I'm I kind, think initially it is. I, I think initially because. Maybe. Because a baby born into a home is... Yeah, I, I can understand where you're going here. ...is subservient to everything around it to be take care of it, take care of it, take care of it. And it doesn't need to be set out on the road and you're free, baby, go do what you want to do. He would not know what to do. He would die. So we must... Oh, man. That little bit of uh, uh, methodology, that, techniques are important. That's why... But later, you got to catch the vision yeah. so you can pull yourself out of that yeah, because I when I was a child, I acted like a child. <laughs> but when I became a man, I pulled myself out into adulthood. Yeah. yeah that's oh, hard. my goodness. This is a heavy truth. So to your point, and that's why I will say I'm a little cautious about being a little too cutty. Yeah, we can't. But but, be there's, but there's things that are missing. Yep. And there's things that aren't really happening. And I think some people kind of know this. But some of the people out there who I know, I think they've kind of lost their way. Because they've, they've, again, they've done like all leaders who are trying to do these things, uh, I, I actually, um, I don't know if you want to call it lectured, taught, raised the awareness to another leader earlier this week of the importance of carrying the vision and carrying the vision as an active, intentional activity where it, it's like down to the point where you have on a piece of paper, the 15 words you're going to say, and you're going to say that crap like almost every day. <laughs> Every week, you ha and, and those exact words. And the reason why you got to do that is because it can't alter. The vision can't alter. If an if a vision can alter, you ain't got a vision. No, it can't. No, it can't. It's alter. something. It's something no. different. So Moses, for example, is carrying a flag, and he's saying the promised land. Follow God's rules. Follow me to the promised land. He's carrying a flag, or he's delegated the person. Hey, carry that flag. Do not let that flag go down. Got to have the promised land. Oh, guys, you got to follow God's law. Got to follow God's law. That, and that's all Moses is. That's but, all he did. That's and he, his job. And to whatever extent that he failed to do that is why he never reached the promised land. But, yeah, he got, yeah, he but at the end of the day, uh, when you're doing, when you get into this muck, it gets messy. You're dealing with this and you get turned around and you're doing all this other stuff. And all of a sudden you're just like, uh, just follow God's law. Like, whoa, you got to get to the promised land. Don't forget that part. Oh, oh yeah, promised land. How did I possibly forget that? But that's what the experience is actually like. But you have to carry that flag because uh, I brought it up last week. The moment I threw out, for example, the Apple Butter Festival, people were like, yes, 
Let's call it the Fall Harvest Festival. Uh. No, <laughs> we are not doing that. In other words, like it has to be actively and intentionally carried. So I, there's some people out there yeah. who are in this it, space, and I think they've kind of lost their way because they're trying to, they're trying to micromanage on how to make that happen. And so the idea, for example, of planting a church. Now, even just saying that is like, ugh. <laughs> to plant a church is insane. You can't plant a church. You can start a church in your house. You could charge. You could start a, a group kind of meeting thing. Well, we even use the term wrong. Start church in our house. That even terminology sure. messes the thing up. Uh, yeah, I would agree. Here's a funny thing. Let's let's stomp. On, we're we're stomping on something that's wrong that we see is wrong that's perpetuating the problem. This paradigm of of uh, pastor leader. He's got it all. Shoot an hour of message. Uh, maybe a little bit of singing, and then that's it. That's the end of the service. That's yep. the end of the worship. Uh, that it, it's so far off from what God was intending. And you see that, and I see that. And so what I'm saying is we got to step on everything. I, I just had a call. They said, we want to get all the pastors together in the area. And I went, okay, will you come? No. Why? Well, I've pastored, but I'm not a pastor. And I'm also prophetic and I'm also a teacher of some of sorts. Yeah, 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 yeah. And wh what I'm saying is, you guys are saying only the leaders in this category coming together. Well, wait a minute, time out. How does that help you? And so you're not going to believe this, but you guys are not going to like this either. I ask people, why do you go to that meeting, and then that meeting, and then that meeting, and then that meeting, and then that teaching, and then that teaching, and that teaching, and it never ends. You've been doing it for you. I've been going through all these things for years. Really? Why? What was the reason? Really? Well, we're just seeking the Lord in it. Really? Let me ask you a question. What do you get out of it? Well, we learn you get education. You, you educate yourself on this, but you don't do any of it. You're not actually doing it. You're just going after from event to event to event. So when they when they do these meetings, so I, I'm not. I, I'd say uh, education could be part of it, but the question I would have is, and you kind of brought up like the lead pastor pastor thing at at a church, a similar kind of thing of to what extent do all of the people get to be the educator, or that they are doing their thing? Because it's, normally it's always. There's a crowd who's facing a particular direction, and then there's one dude or some sets of people, and that's it, right? It's like a, like a seminar. You go to a seminar, you sit down, and you consume, and you move on. That's the problem with well, the lead pastor concept. Well, that's what I'm trying to say, and you think it's a minor comment, but we receive from the Lord, okay, by that which every joint supplies. There are certain things in the joints of the body without those oh, joints man. we don't function properly oh, and we get people who are born without a leg or or they're born deformed and that is a they can't function as a normal body and so we are deformed generally and and so what happens is we're not fully mm. functioning like the body of Christ there's nothing wrong with the body of Christ. Nothing wrong with the body of Christ. And that's the whole point. He said the church, which is his body, and we are members in particular of each other. That is an amazing concept. And again, I've said this before, a living organism, not a living organization. Once you say organization, man's involved. Oh, man. It's an organism. You start going like... It's uh, like being you, organic. Instead they, of buying anything else out there, you're going... You start seeing things like... How do we fund this thing? Yeah. What, are, what the hell are we talking about funding for? Mm. What do you, like, what exactly are you trying to go do? Okay, then we could talk about funding, but why is that the most thing? Well, how do we take attendance? <laughs> what, what do you need attendance for? Yeah. And Again, like, uh, uh, you know, there's there's more to this topic than, than, oh than justice, goodness. but, you know, the idea of, like, what would you do in your house? And so you're not... Funding is like a secondary conversation versus like the other aspects that are going. Funding on. Take care of, takes care of itself. I've, I've heard I've heard that many many. Funding many times. takes care of itself. But I had a, a pastor friend of mine. He had some pastors all together, and he was sharing with them about this freedom and everything, and that, that we function by that which every joint supplies, and the we are free, and we are priests of the Lord, and we're sons and daughters of God, and we don't have to have 
one guy over us telling us what to do on Sunday morning, how, you know, whatever. That's so narrow-minded, he was saying. And he got through all this freedom stuff, and a pastor came up to him and said, you know, I speak for a few of the guys I was talking with. We want to ask you, you the question, how do we maintain control? <laughs> <laughs> and I'm like, yeah, you could probably hear him laughing because it's on me right now, the camera. But I'm telling you, these guys don't know how to maintain control, and so they lose, and they prove that that paradigm doesn't work. And yet, right in front of their mouth, how do I keep it? And 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 the and the and the pastor said to him, "That's the whole point. I'm trying to tell you, you can't control this. This is not something you're supposed to control." And you know, believe it or not, this guy had an open mic in his church, and people would get up and share. And, and and whatever, whatever, whatever. And he yes. allowed it and he worked with it. I, it's a f scary thing because you can get some wacko up there. And he did have get a few wackos up there, share stuff that was stupid. But he knew that. But that that's okay. That That's actually part of the process. That's part of the process. I'm telling you, when, when we have our meeting and we're now talking about the Bible, there's going to be people in, in our group is uh, the, the safe. And comfortable enough because we have worked yes. with each other enough that somebody can say, I don't agree with that at all. And then <laughs> somebody else might pipe in and they may, they're, they'll kind of maybe, maybe explain a bit more and like, well, okay, well maybe, you know? And so there's that exchange that's called a healthy organism where Bingo. there's this, this kind of, uh, this kind of give and take. That's what a group is. There's all these like crazy leftists out there right now who like argue that this kind of stuff needs to happen, that it's like, oh, well, we need to like respect other people's opinions and stuff. And it's like, true, but it's in a particular context and that's not really happening because the way that you're trying to make that happen isn't how this happens. And that's the that control. You have to, you have to, that's right, it is. You, like the secret, right? I'm all about finding the secrets of leadership. Okay, <laughs> I'm, I'm telling the camera now. We're the trying. secret to this is you have to break bread. You have to break bread with the group and you have to do it enough times Bingo. And, and with no agenda. You Bingo. just go and do it enough times that eventually it just happens. And so these people who are like the wackos, so to say, the problem is, is they aren't invited as part of the group to like, try to like, dude, cool. You're why are you, why do you act weird? I don't know what you're talking about. Dude, you just hopped on stage and said Jesus was naked or something. And like and, that's how it works. And that gives you evidence that they don't have the vision that we're talking no, about. No, they don't. And 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 this is the this is the dilemma for you and me, Mike, is that we're just trying to expose it. We're trying to open up the curtain and say, see, this is not working. Or or this is how it ought to be. These are kinds of things that are very difficult to communicate. And I said about this way back. Once the person hears and sees it, yes, then they go there. You can't get there unless you hear it and see it, then you begin to do it. And so our our um, what do you call it? our burden is to share this and say, it's great out there. I don't have anything against Baptists per se individually. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But that paradigm is killing the church. I think and if we fall for it, I don't personally like. I think if you call it the Baptist paradigm, you well, it's I general. Think, I think you've you've actually done yourself a disservice by bringing it so down. I mean, I know kind of why you're saying it because there's so many like Baptist churches and yeah, stuff like it's, that. It's a general but, thing, but yeah. it's not because Presbyterians are doing it. The Catholic That's Church right. is the expert That's at doing right. it wrong. Yeah, the uh, the Orthodox churches are doing this. They're all of the churches by which you have if you have a name for that church. Like as a denomination, you are absolutely doing it in some form. Yeah. Now, I'm going to sort of cool the jets on being too negative, especially about like the church that we go to, because I would say they get it like maybe half okay right. They actually are doing some of the things that are there. There's other things that they're doing that are very questionable that it's hard to even kind of, I don't even know how to like poke that chink in the armor because it's like, Hey, you know how you like really like doing all this thing? You really shouldn't do it. And that, I mean, that's a hard conversation to open. So it's like, oh. I would say 25 to 35 to 40% of what the, the church that, that we go to does is wrong. Like right. you should not do that. Right. Or, or you need to do it in a different context. 
So, for example, I truly believe that my, churches, as, as an organization, I'm going to be okay with organization, they should do things like have non-believer night. Which maybe that's Monday through Saturday, and then they have <laughs> Sunday is the Believer Day. Or if you wanted, you want to go Old Testament or whatever, you go Saturday. That's fine. Do that. You know, believers on Saturday. All the rest are for the unbelievers, and make that known. People who maybe are interested in coming to Christ, maybe who have heard this thing, you don't know. And that about takes it. leadership. Yes, it does. And then you can do you can do the worship music. You can do all the oh, come to the prayer call, tip it on. You know, you can do all that craziness that people call regular church, which is. That should not be going on. Regular Christians should not be yeah. doing any of that stuff. Um, that would be fine. But to intermix those, you're, you're part of the problem. That's part of the problem. And it perpetuates that very thing. And it goes like, well, this is what it is. And then next thing you start going like, we, what you really need is a more holy sanctuary. Yeah, no, a better looking church. A better looking church. Yeah. <clears throat> Let me read a scripture to you, yeah. that you that's exactly what we're talking about. But this is how... Uh, when, when this is when it, at, right after it's talking about the fivefold gift ministries of pastors, apostles, teachers, pastors, teachers, whatever, they that it says uh, until we henceforth be no more children tossed to and fro and carried about by every wind of doctrine by the slight of man. That means the the idea slight of man or the control of man and cunning craftiness, cunning which is craftiness. part of the control thing. It is uh, whereby they lie and wait to deceive, but. Speaking the truth in love may grow up into him in all things which is the head, even Christ, from whom the whole body fitly joined together and fitly compacted, together. not in a church, fitly joined together because as a body and compacted by that which every joint supplies. This is compacted is the word gelled. And, and gelled by that which every joint supplies, according to the effectual working in every person, in every part, makes an increase, not of the church, increase of the body unto the edifying of itself in love. There is your scripture. That is what we supposed to do. That is what we used to call, when I first got saved, body ministry. Mm. It's body ministry to one another. It's it, we don't realize, but the knee, my knee right now is crushed and now it's healed. And it's sending a message to my brain saying, I'm okay now. Mm. And and the brain needs to know that. Otherwise, it's going, oh, send blood down to the yeah, knee. You know, yeah. it's a, so the, uh, some of that natural organism takes place by itself. It's natural. It's not controlled. It happens at the church. Well, we don't want to do that outside the church. We need to keep that going in the church. Really? Really? That's what you need to do? You need to have it in, in this house? In this building, it's an edifice complex that people have, and they lose the fact that this is a natural. Or, uh, we're going over everywhere telling people when you buy something, buy the organic. At least oh, yeah. it doesn't have the the GMO, the this, the that, the the, the bioengineered stuff. And we're trying to keep people in the organic. Well, the church needs to be organic. Uh, if you are, are you out there? Are you listening to me? If it's processed, it's controlled, and that's not good. And a lot of people we've told this to and talked to, even across the table while we're eating, go reject it because they've never heard it. What you are you? I've got to have uh, the, my favorite one as well. I, I, I got to have meat, and suddenly they they see themselves being controlled to keep from them what they really want. When that's not the point. That's not the point. It's what is healthy. It's what the body naturally does. In the natural, if you give it the natural food it needs, which is the word of God, by the way, but that's what I believe. But we we share it, and we and we see what like if you live up in a family, mm. I had six ki six brothers and sisters. There was eight of us in a one house. Everyone knew that John was analytical, or that Kit was talented and played guitar, and that Roger did this, and Sherry was a singer and a dancer, and and everyone knew their gifts. In the family, we didn't have to go to church to find that out. We didn't have to go to a building to find that out. The natural, you know when your leg is hurting and your hip is hurting. Believe me, when I'm yeah. 71 now, my hip hurt. You know when there's hurting and when there's healthiness. Mm. And you enjoy it. You don't say, now knee, act like a knee. There's no need for that. That's a paradigm oh, shift. I see. We, we think someone's got to tell me what the, well, yes, we have a brain. But the Bible says the brain... The head of the church is Christ. And so we go, 
Oh, I see. So if we have a difficulty, because we notice difficulties, we go to Christ and pray for him. We go to Jesus and pray. We say, Lord, you're the head. What do we do now? And he will tell us what to do because he's faithful to his body. And suddenly things begin to be an organi organism rather than an organization. Yes, yeah. there's organization for the young and for the babes in Christ, and it's probably good to some degree. I have my trouble with it because most of them get sucked into that, and then that's that's it. But we, we're trying to share... This revelation. Man, there's so many bomb. There's so many bombshells in this conversation. Because I mean, oh, I, so many, and you've got very, to get the vision if you're going to pull yourself out. You know, you just mentioned the organization thing. I had never considered because I never had kind of this perspective that organization is actually needed for, as you said, the babe, the baby, the baby. There's no question. I about never, it. never thought about it that that that's what the organizations need for. And that's why I would say, well. The nature of these churches doing the thing that they're doing, they're hitting, you know, repeat, you know, they hit the play, the loop button every single Sunday. Reset. Well, maybe what they are, right, is they're these kind of, um, they're like fly traps. And, and, and the person who who is like maybe thinking like, well, maybe I need to come back to God. And of course, they could just instantaneously come back to God. But they, they need, they're a babe and they need milk. And so they land on one of the fly traps, which would be okay. Uh, first, Presbyterian. Oh, I didn't really like that one. You know, it didn't really catch me. And then, oh, I'm going to... Now I'm really stuck at... Methodist. Uh, cool guy non-denominational because they've got the rock music, which I don't really like the rock music, but it's more like, you know, it's yeah, not yeah. an organ and old people sing... Well, and really what it is is, well, they're not just old people. You know, that's that's like why <clears throat> the modern churches exist. Is, but what they're doing is, again, there are flies and they're trying to land on the particular fly trap that they need. And that is the getting sucked in. But the problem is, is they came to Christ through a temple. If that's how they're coming to Christ, they're coming to Christ through a temple. If they did. And yeah. that is not how it works. Now, maybe that's okay to like kind of start because now you're at least maybe, maybe you're closer to the people or the individuals or the organism. That's like, I'm now going to snatch you out of this thing. And bring you over because you believe. So don't go to this thing. You need to you need to get off the milk and milk get on the, the word. Food. And it says you're not able to take meat because you're babes in Christ. You're babes in righteousness, yeah. and you need that organization, so to speak. And and so I was blessed because I grew up in the Jesus Revolution in a meeting in a home oh. where everybody knew everybody. Yeah. And I was that's and I got saved in my bedroom. I see. You know, and so. We went to the church and said, hey, we got this thing. Jesus, we got this. And the church yeah. threw us out. I, t I totally believe it. The church said, well, you can't come here anymore. We can't be. We can't have uh, hippies believing in Jesus. The, the, pri the priest going, you are not dressed how you're <laughs> supposed to be dressed. Yeah, yeah. And you're like, dude, yeah. are, is this, oh, oh, did I just step into the, the Judaism <laughs> temple? No, this is Christianity. <laughs> no, it's not. I hope you hear this, people out there, because we touched on something that is crucial and extremely important to the church at large, wherever you want to say it, regional or, yeah. or, or on earth. And I was in the Middle East, and they're doing the same thing. The same thing's oh, of happening. Of course they are, man. That's what I was saying. I think it's, I think it's the natural way that people go... Oh, I want I want to be spiritual, and in order to be spiritual, I've got to go to the thing that really makes it spiritual. Oh, um, and and that's got to have uh, it's got to have big amazing things, and it's got to have it's so much bigger than me, and it's got to have <laughs> like uh, uh, oh that guy is more spiritual, and in order to be like him, I've got to go down a hundred times, and then I've got to like shake this way, I've got to drink this special cup. Oh, it's blood? Oh, it's blood? Tell me it's blood? Okay, it's blood. It's not blood. It's freaking juice. <laughs> like, they got, like, they, if it's... How dare you? If it's not like a cult, then it can't possibly be the real thing. I'm, I can just feel it. I'm so spiritual. No, you're not. Yep. <laughs> but you know exactly. That is literally all of the religions. And like, even like, for example, Buddhism or any of this stuff. I've got to sit and i got to do this. And hum. No, you don't. <laughs> this is ridiculous. And they kind of, and, and they, some of those people kind of get it too, because it's like, you don't do that. But you have to do this way in order to do, to not do that. It's to like, get somewhere. Well, to get but, somewhere. But no one does that. Yeah. They get stuck in the, I have to do the rituals, 
the rituals is what it's all about. This, the, and if the things out there in the real world aren't responding to the fact that I have to have the rituals, then it can't yep. be real. Yep. So it, this must be a thing. You're looking at like Notre Dame, these like amazing buildings. This must be real because look at this building. Yep. This is a massive shift for me because I had to start questioning all sorts of things. And almost anything that says worship in it, I'm now like, Whoa, whoa. <laughs> wait a minute. Whoa, I never thought about this. So, for example, I like Bach music. I've liked Bach music my entire life, long before I cared about any of these topics, which that should be an asterisk right <laughs> yeah. out of there. Why do I like Bach? Well, Bach's music kind of, it sings a particular kinds of flavor that meshes with other things that I like, uh, like music-wise, and it would sing the particular kinds of way to me. Not to me, that being better to going out, but me in my hyper focus on the thing. And I'm listening, I'm like, that guy is excellent. That's like an amazing composer. He's all this kind of stuff. And then and then you look up like, oh, this is actually like worship music that he he created way back when and they used to play this in churches. Like, this is even better now. You see, you see where I'm going here. It's like, yeah, but the problem with that music, and it had never come to me before, is it's the same problem with all worship music. It's about you. And only you and your connection with God. And that seems like that's the right thing to do. But what is the cost? It puts you in a silo by yourself and it robs you of all your freedoms. Yeah. And and it gets your attention. Oh, stupid. It gets your attention off Jesus. It does. Because Jesus is the life of the body. We, Christ has a body, and He's the head of the body, but He wants that body. He, he wants that body. Now you can do it a different way. You can say it's the bride of Christ, and the body is the bride of Christ. He takes care of the bride. He loves the bride. He's the bridegroom. We we have to look at this in a natural setting, not in a house of worship or a a a denomination. Worship services was another word. That services they that you going somewhere, you're getting serviced. You're getting because what it is is it's a consumption thing, and they talk about this. So I'm not I'm not trying to be too critical. They do mention, hey, you can't just like consume, and it's like, but you've set this whole place up to be consuming. Yeah, like yeah. you are consuming. I'm not going on stage to play music. Neither that person or that person or that person or any of these people. None of these people are actually going to go up there. So there's no. So I can appreciate like a choir where there's like 30, 40 people doing it, and there's regular people in that choir. I think that's something good. I think that that probably was done by like the Catholic Church and those types. That's cool. That's good. Yeah, but did you go to mass? <laughs> and but, but it's I, another I, word for service. I, I, I the thing is disjointed. There is some good in probably every single one of those things. The probably a lot less so the ritual stuff. Yeah. That stuff is that stuff's my, dangerous. My last people that I baptized. <laughs> Back home in Ontario, New York, and the church I had there in Ontario, New York, I had there for five years. The last 47 people, I counted them and I had a uh, kept uh, record, you know. Yeah. They were. They were Italians because there was a lot of Italians in the in the area, but they were Catholics, ex-Catholics. Oh, they, I see. They got saved. They were still going to. The, some of them kept going to the Catholic Church. Because they were babes, they needed it for a while. Yes, but when they grew up, they went. You know, this is not enough. I need to be, you know, with this. And we were still doing praising Jesus and and enjoying the gifts of the Spirit and things that God was doing. And they were. They said, "We need some of that. We don't have that at Mass because that's where they came from. That service. It wasn't enough." So the babes, and they caught a vision, they realized there's something more, and they pulled themselves out. That word that you said is so true. They got to pull themselves up. They, they have to pull themselves, because they have to identify, I am now mature. Like, this has to happen. I am now mature. I am going to take the reins on this thing, and going, they're not really doing the things how they're supposed to, because when I look at the book, because I can now read. And yeah. hey, I've now I've now decided I want to get a little bit further in there, and I want to find out that even though this is like the most accurate Bible on planet Earth, you know, English wise, I want to get a little bit further in there, and find out what the word worship means. You go and you find, it, and you're like, okay, so you're you're getting more understanding of these things. That is the process by which you pull yourself out. Then you go and you start to go figure part, out how to go do these things. That's what we have to be careful of. I've I've met people who are pulling themselves out. They're, they're in the process. Yes. They're going from milk to meat. Yes. They're, they see something. They heard about it. 
They see it and they go, you know what? I got to go that way. That's I just got to go that way. That's this is not fulfilling. This is not working. It worked to a while, but now I'm five yeah. years old. I'm six years old. I got to pull myself up out of there and become a, a young man, young woman. And I, I, I got to grow up in him. And you start to grow up. It's all natural, by the way. It's all a natural thing. It's all an organism. We, we try to say, well, you know, he went to the air and this was, listen. You know what it's not? It's not fortified. You know or what I mean? For, or forced. Or, or for, fortified means, like in, in food, that you have to add things to it. Like you got to add. beef it up. Yeah, you got to add the nutrients into it because there ain't no nutrients there. Yeah. It ain't fortified. It's the actual thing. Yeah. And they, they, they begin to be weak because they're not eating the right food. Yes. And you can do it any way you want naturally. You can say it. What, the Bible talks about it in body form. Natural form, natural move, the natural how crazy, move of life. Just the more that I think about this, the more crazy it gets. Because think about how churches, and I mean church TM, preaches, <laughs> preach TM <laughs> about how people don't go to church anymore. Imagine for a moment, the, the thing that the control freaks who are afraid, who definitely don't know what to do, because there's not a leader there. I actually already know this. Management requires a leader because management freaks out all the time and a leader's like, we're going in that direction. Calm down, calm down. Don't don't scare everybody over there. And that person has to talk to the people like, they're kind of crazy. They do their thing. Don't worry about it. Don't listen to them. You know, they're, they're, help, they're helpful, but, you know, um, they say things like that. And so when you move into distributed systems, which is that's what Christianity is, is a distributed system, you can no longer measure it. So you don't actually know how many Christians are actually out there. In fact, the more Christians there are, the less you can measure them. Because they aren't in a place by which you can measure. That's right. And they're, they're, they're out there naturally. Oh, we don't go to church anymore. I would freak out about that. I would say, oh my God, now you're in trouble. Now I'm saying, yay, good. Now, yeah. you, now you're losing. You're no longer, if I may say, you're being weaned. Weaned. You're getting weaned from the the tea of religion. Tea of religion. <laughs> and you're you're going now to meet. Oh, I'm chewing on the word of God. So it's so crazy because one of the things that was like very ample in the writings of that that pre 300 A.D. was the persecution of Christians because they were atheists. And this is really important to understand. Consider for a moment that Christians, which is the thing that. Oh my goodness! I'm so um, I'm so persecuted today because of my religion and Christianity. I want to be able to go to my church. I need to go to my church to worship. <sighs> I can't go because of COVID. Which you know, <laughs> <laughs> I have my opinions on that. I'm just I'm just throwing out there what people are doing. I have to go to the church. This is so evil. They would not let me go to my church because of COVID. Ah, which is evil. But <laughs> they're going to the church. The, the fact is, is that people were persecuted because they were considered atheists. Why were they considered atheists? Because they did not go to an altar. They did not sacrifice things to a God. They did not go to a temple. They did not listen to religious priests and they did not do religious rituals. And they didn't and, follow the order. And even, yes, and even the pagans would do that. So people who were of any imaginable religion, every single one of them did it. And people who were part of the non-religion, they did it. So they only could, could include that these people don't actually believe in a God. And that's why they were persecuted. And I'm gonna, That's very shocking. And I'm going to blow your mind, but actually the persecution was good for them because if you read another scripture where it says they were greatly persecuted and the church grew like crazy. Well, how come? I got a guy that's ministering in yeah, China a, right now. That's a really good point. And he was with this Chinese people, and they're praying, and he's teaching them the Bible. And he said, now let's pray and ask God to undertake for us persecution you have in China. And they said, oh, no, we don't do that. He goes, why not? He said, we understand that the persecution and the hard hand of China over us keeps us in check. And he almost fainted. He couldn't believe his ears. And they said, we understand that that's necessary for us. And I, it, it blew his uh, theological mind. Why, why would he? Why would he do that? Because that's Judaism. 
Well, yeah, but see, what I'm saying Sorry, is... Sorry, go ahead. <laughs> what I'm saying is they recognize that there's a persecution that keeps them in check in a way so that they won't stray off into this Judaism, quote-unquote, Christian Judaism. They knew that if we fall into the old way, we're not going to have missionaries come to us and tell us about the true Jesus. Wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. I know it's heavy, but... Okay, okay. Now, I think I missed something here. Yeah. See, so they, go ahead. Go they ahead. knew that they would be drawn into a segmented church type of worship, which the Chinese are happy to perform for them. They don't want, if, them, to, if, they don't want them to be free and if, talk about Christ. They want them to be in this church of China. They want to stay within the, the denominational thing, whatever the church is called out there in China. If they would go there, okay, we're okay with that. They're not okay with meeting in homes and preaching Christ. No, 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 that, they, they don't want that because that's freedom. And that is contagious, and it's spread. By the way, there's almost well, eight thousand. Well, hold on, hold on. I know there's almost wait a minute, almost eight thousand people getting saved in China. How come? Not in the church, not in the the organizationism, yeah. But in the organism of meeting in homes underneath the basements, hiding from the person. So I've got some questions because I there's some of this I'm kind of understanding and I'm kind of not understanding. Okay, so I get that there that this dude is going to like he's going to homes. What was the thing that he was saying? And they were saying, no, we don't want that. What was well, that? He said, let's get rid of, we'll pray against the government and stop persecuting oh, that's right. the, the pers church. Pers persecuting the church, right. They, they, well, let's, let's stop, let's pray against the persecution of the church because they're killing people sometimes when they find you doing this stuff. So so I understand that. So or putting what, in jail. What I'm, what I'm then saying is like, okay, so what you're saying is that they have fear that their government will stamp them out. Is that right? And... Bring them into a church of worship, a house of worship, a, a yeah, play yeah. denominated the Church of China. Yeah, the 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 Christian Church of China. And they're going to segment them into that, and that's okay. If you're there, the Chinese say, "Okay, well, you're going." So, are you saying that they know, as in they've caught the vision, that they know that if this if this were to go out, and we're supposed to like get very open with it, that they are going to lose their Christianity? I wish more people could hear what we're talking about because and get it and catch the vision. That's kind of, I mean, what you just said, it was kind of complicated, but what you're saying is these Chinese people are actually really smart and they're very and, savvy. That's right. And they saw that they're losing people by the thousands getting freedom and, and, and meeting undercover. I see. They didn't like that. Listen, if you can't quit that and come over here and be in the church and do your church thing, we're okay with that. And, and so are we in America. We're going, oh, yeah, if you just do this paradigm, it's okay. We're, like, we're okay with that. But if you're going to meet in homes and do the community thing and and act like an organism, we're not going to be able to control that. Oh, yeah, for sure. You can't count it. Yeah. You can't you can't dictate what the messages are. You can't do any of that and stuff. And China would be afraid to not be able to control it. And so they're so they're not necessarily afraid of their government per se, but they want the thing to be successful and they understand that by being underground about it, that is the thing that will create success. Is, well, they is, that know, what, is that what you're saying? Technically, yes. They know that the, being an organism, being a natural thing, uh, meeting, although they're afraid of the government, so they meet underground. You, you wouldn't believe the things they go through just to meet underground. But they do that, and they don't pray against the government because they know it keeps us in check. It keeps us natural. It keeps us in organism. It's so weird, man. And I, it's I, powerful. I, so, but, but if you bring it to today, look at that's China. Yeah. Bring it up to America. They're saying the church leaders and their religious are saying, go to church, house of worship, and you'll be a good Christian. And if you don't do that and you're off doing whatever, we can't control that. <laughs> no, that's right. You can't control. And God is working in these communities and homes and stuff and he's doing a wonderful thing and nobody can control it and nobody has any say in it really because god will do it if he wants to whether he likes it or not but what i'm saying is is that we're growing up we have to grow up out of that denominate out of that organization and pretty soon you catch the vision you hear about it and then you begin to see it and then you go toward it. You've got to hear, see, do, or yeah. you won't get there. But what happens is, is that you begin, without a progressive vision, you dwell carelessly. The word is, you well, don't careless. pull yourself out. Yeah. Because, why should I pull myself out? I'm doing fine. We have a wonderful church together. We, we have a wonderful, beautiful church and beautiful, please. Well, tomorrow, tomorrow when we go to church, we'll just, I'll, I'll just tip my hat and we'll kind of wink. And <laughs> we'll just, we'll just keep pretending. Salute. <laughs>
And we'll salute. No, it's not. It's not that bad. But um, yeah, I I really enjoyed this podcast. Uh, are you yep. going to the men's thing here in a, in a few? I had not planned. I'm meeting my wife. Okay. Somewhere. Somewhere, yeah. yeah, I'm gonna go do it. I figured I might as well. They're going like doing stuff, like oh, they're gonna go like help throw a bunch of mulch down or whatever. But oh, I heard about um, that. Yeah, I, I I really enjoyed doing this podcast. I wanted to come out oh. with this, and I wanted I, I I'm glad how this podcast went because uh, anybody who's watching this, um, I think this is like probably one of our best episodes where you can see something that's very organic, very natural. In in while it's like while it's hot, you can see you can see what happens when when somebody all of a sudden caught something. They actually they they like actually took it in, and then the moving into the next steps of like okay, well, so what? And what's so cool about it? And I was kind of pre- I'll say preaching so to say to this person earlier this week about this, and now I understand it's about the 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 entire body and all the joints connected, so it can work as one which is what I was preaching and I didn't use those words. I didn't even think about it, but now I understand that that is, that is absolutely what it is. You have to catch the vision so that you can be part of the arm or the body that's doing the thing. And so, um, you know, eventually you realize like, Oh, I've been totally marching in the wrong direction. It's like, okay, well now you're, (laughs) now you're actually useful because up until that point you're not. And that's what this show is about. And so that's what I thought that, you know, this episode could be way beyond my wildest expectations. I feel that this is what it is. We're here now. Yeah. Catch the vision. It was yeah. caught. And he got a revelation. <laughs> I got a revelation. We want you to have a revelation. Yep. Because once you get it, you're done. We don't have to even do that much. Once you get the revelation, you go, oh, I, I see that. You're on your way. You're in the journey. And uh, he pulled this on me without telling me ahead of time. Yep. <laughs> yeah, but we understand it. We want to share that with you only to encourage you to grow up in Christ. Yep. So, um, yep. We want your comments. We want to. We want to see it. Uh, we do this live every single Saturday at eight o'clock uh, yep. Eastern time. Uh, we then post it on YouTube. If if maybe you saw some of this on Facebook, and you know that's where it goes live. It goes on there, and it's kind of no, it's very non edited. The the quality is nowhere near like it is on on YouTube. I basically spend a little bit of time editing it and kind of cleaning it up and making sure that things are real nice. So on YouTube is like really the best way to do it. I highly recommend people subscribe to my channel. Um, and if you're seeing this on my Facebook, feel free to add me so that you could kind of see these things. But I would highly recommend seeing it on YouTube, subscribing on YouTube because they send notifications out and stuff like that. Facebook is just kind of, uh, I don't know, we just do it. <laughs> so um with that said we'll see you next week Have blessings amen thank you mike